Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the launch of our Basic Income Grant South Africa website. And um, we are so happy to have you joining us. Please just be patient with us. We are going to play a couple of testimonies while we wait for everyone else to join, but we will begin very, very shortly. And thank you so much for being on time. Um, Tina, can you just let us know whether we will be hearing the um, testimonials or not? Hi, Isabel. Sorry about that. They're going to be playing now. Morning. I'm Lillian. I'm also supporting this um, grant because it will help even for all of us because also this uh gen is this abuse is also coming in order to hide it is just because some of us we're hiding because we don't have any income and you know that if maybe you talk about the abuse which is on our side you will know that you, at the end of the day you won't get any support from no one then it's whereby you hide everything because you know financially you are broke and at the same time if you talk about what this uh, man or what this person who always giving you money and is doing like this and then there will be no food for you in the table it will ha help us a lot it's mama lillian from f81 who's talking now i'm mama lillian from f81 i say forward with a grant of 1335 because it's gonna help us a lot. I really, we really need it. It's gonna make a big difference even in this crime which is happening around because the people, they do some other things out of depression, they are broken, the people are hungry outside. Thank you. Good morning all. This is a plea on behalf of myself, Yvonne Kluti, from the Manimba community. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and what I see in my community. Our people are struggling. Our poor is getting poorer, me being one of those people. I have worked last in 2015. I've been at home since 2015, taking care of my elderly mother, which was diagnosed with dementia. Before that, I was unable to find a job. Even now, I'm unable to find a job due to age restrictions. I'm still very young at heart, very fit, but cannot find employment due to I'm either the color of my skin is not right, and now it's my age is not right. 
I am currently living with my husband, which is also unemployed, which is facing the same difficulty. He's been unemployed now for six months because he has the qualifications, but due to his skin color being too light and due to his age being over 35, he cannot find a job either. We are struggling to raise our three children and it's difficult. So the grant will actually make a huge difference, not just to me and my family, but also to the community. Because I used to feed the community out of my own pocket. But since I've been unemployed and since COVID started and my okay. husband my lost his job Jacobs. due to COVID, I unfortunately, I cannot currency. continue any longer. So it is a day-to-day -day struggle. Every day there's a hungry child to feed, a hungry adult to feed, an elderly person to feed at my door. So this grant for all unemployed people would make a tremendous, tremendous difference in our community. So please, please hear our plea from the people of Menenburg, and not just Menenburg, there's a whole lot of other communities that I cannot speak for. I can only speak for the community of Menenburg. Please consider giving the unemployed the grant. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being patient with us and thank you for taking the time out of your busy days to, to come to this exciting launch of the Basic Income Grant South Africa website. Um, this website has been months in the making and there have been a lot of blood, sweat and tears put into it. So we are so, so grateful to you for coming. Um, my name is Tina Van Straten and I am the Basic Income Grant Advocacy Intern at the Studies in Poverty and Inequality Institute and I am going to be hosting um, this website launch. So first and foremost, I'm going to hand over to our Director at the Studies in Poverty and Inequality Institute, Ms. Isabel Fry, um, and she is going to do the introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tina, and, and thank you. Welcome to everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to host you, and I see friends from across the spectrum of the work that we do, um, and we are also uh, live on Facebook streaming. I have to keep on remembering what these words are. Um, so let me just again say it was it's, it's an absolute pleasure. I just want to say a few words about the Basic Income Grant um, in as we launch and, and bring together why it's such an important hub um, of activity and knowledge uh, in, the, in the site itself. Um, South Africa is a country that takes your heart and soul. It can be cruel and kind, but it seems it can never be fair. And South Africa just does not want to be just. The unfairness of the colonial and apartheid past will for generations have an imprint on our children and our children's children's lives. The apartness of the racist capitalist regime that was condemned as a crime against humanity and inhumane government permeates every inch of our collective being, dividing us and scattering us. Our constitution talks about healing the divisions of the past. It talks about establishing a society based on democratic values, social justice and fundamental rights. It also talks of improving the quality of all citizens and freeing the potential of every person in the preamble. And yet, and yet we are the most unequal country in the world, both in terms of income and wealth. And yet we continue to grow apart with the lavishness sitting alongside obscene poverty. We have no employment for the majority of young people coming into adulthood. More than seven out of every 10 youth are unemployed. Once unemployed, the likelihood of finding employment is less than three in 10 and the number of people starving grows daily. So to go back to the constitution, section 10 guarantees to all the fundamental right to dignity. And I quote, everyone has inherent dignity and the right to have their dignity respected and protected. 
The drafters of the constitution, aware of the need to build and restore and return the wealth of the country to the majority, including, included socioeconomic rights in the Bill of Rights in chapter two of our constitution. According to section 7.2 of the constitution, the state has the obligation to respect, protect, promote and fulfill these rights. Two things must be noted at this point. Firstly, unlike many other uh, rights treaties, the state has the obligation to fulfill, not just to respect, protect and promote, but to actually fulfill the rights in the constitution. And secondly, the drafters with some prescience of the battle for restoration and true liberation that would lie ahead of us as a young democracy included the fact that these rights were justiciable, that this, the courts should be used when the executive fails to implement these rights uh, to correct that. We need to ensure that the state's maximum available resources are being used to ensure that, our, that everybody's dignity in South Africa is met and fulfilled. And so against that background, I'd just like to share some of my own uh, journey in this long march towards the basic income grant. As far back as 1998, uh, and I shudder to think that some of you might not even have been born around then, the presidential job, at the presidential job summit, Kasatu, which was, is, remains part of the tripartite alliance, raised their concerns about the low levels of decent jobs that were happening even then. In response, the government appointed a committee of inquiry into a comprehensive social security system. Social security even then was recognized for its potential to create a, so a safety net for all where the market fails. Our social security, however, in South Africa remains an imprint of apartheid policies where protection these days is still only for children and for older people and for people living with disabilities, people who are meant to be outside of the labor market. The reason for this is that under apartheid, of course, jobs were reserved for whites. Hence, if you were a work, of a working age, you were guaranteed, in effect, a job. There was no need for the state to provide social assistance for working age white adults. The six months unemployment insurance fund was the transitional safety net for people who were temporary outside of, of work. And yet our transition to democracy has never replaced the imprint of that Social Assistance Act. White privilege was built on a welfare state, and yet today we are told that a welfare state undermines dignity. The work of the Taylor Committee was excellent, uh, perhaps the height of our early democratic commitment and vision. More than two years of input work and the outcome was radical. It was truly revolutionary. The, basic, uh, the, the Taylor Report recommended a universal safety net that would ensure that all had a decent life, that our economy had enough income circulating to ensure economic growth, that township and rural economies would be able to thrive, and that micro-entrepreneurs would be able to take the risks that are required to start businesses and to sustain businesses. And yet, despite the constitutional right to social security, and despite the fact that more than 22 million adults uh, in South Africa are not working, there is no formal permanent categorized program for social security for adults in South Africa. And this is where the concept of a universal basic income grant was raised for the first time in South African polity, the broad alliance of social movements and social justice organizations. And yet at the time, the ruling party deemed that a universal basic income grant was not the best option and it refused to adopt a basic income grant. In 2005-06, we had a primary budget surplus and yet still the then Minister of Finance, Trevor Manuel, said that we could not afford a basic income grant. In those days, a basic income grant of 100 Rand was deemed sufficient to close the poverty gap by 67%. Just think of how different our national trajectory would have been if we'd adopted this then. And so since then, through community constituency at NEDLAC, SPY has kept the demand for a basic income grant alive over the years. And, has and we included it in the negotiations for a comprehensive social security, which have just come to an end in NEDLAC. Ironically, it was not the rising unemployment figures that journeyed us as a nation across the Rubicon of grants polity 
to extend grants to working age people, but COVID-19, when our president announced for the first time that grants would be made available to working age people. And yet we did not sit back and wait for this to continue. We knew that the journey would continue to be hard. And so at SPI, we've disciplined ourselves to undertaking research to make the case time and time again. The case that we have made is that a decent universal BIG that we've worked out linking to the upper bound poverty line of Stats SA is the only way that we have seen the models generate the levels of economic growth and the levels of sustained job creation that will begin to turn around our frightening economic decline. The case that we've made is that a BIG is the easiest way that the state can meet its obligation, constitutional obligations, seriously affirming the rule of law for millions of people for whom the law usually only serves to criminalize. The case we make is that a BIG will create the kinds of local demand that will rebirth township economies and SMMEs, creating demand where now people have no disposable income, giving government the kind of bargaining power that you can use to leverage financial inclusion with banks, to reduce administered prices on foodstuffs through retail supermarkets, and that would enable us to pull demand and so further stretch the monies. We know that the multiplier on each round of state spend would give us back one between one and a half and two and a half return. We know that a universal BIG will advance women's power. And finally, we know that the withdrawal of the social relief of distress 350 rand, uh, which we see as being the first step to a BIG, will unleash such anger and such hopelessness that we will not be able to recover the commitment and innocence of our liberation and our hopes for a better life for all. This website is a contribution by SPY to the debates through the Research Hub, and it is a platform for every person, for each one of us, to share our commitment through a testimony of what a BIG could mean for our lives. As SPY, we are enormously privileged to have been trusted with people's dreams, and we commit our institution towards making this a reality as much as we can. South Africa, as I said at the beginning, is a country that takes your heart and takes your soul. It can be cruel and kind, but it seems it can never be fair and it does not want to be just. We hope that through this site, we can turn that around and begin to build the space for a just and fair South Africa going forward. As I hand back, I would like to thank Tina von Straten for her work in making this dream a reality, and to the volunteers Luke Kralen and Christopher Mullen, both students at UP who completely volunteer their time to develop the BIG graphics and the site. And finally, I'd like to say, keep an eye open for the last of SPI's BIG webinars for 2021 on the multiplier effect. Um, and we'd also like to invite you tomorrow to our MTBPS webinar that we're co-hosting with UNICEF um, at which National, National Treasury and others will share their views on the most recent MTBPS, including on social security. And finally, we're delighted to share that the collaboration between SPI Telkom and the Halema Mutlanti Foundation will kick off with a high level dialogue um, on the 25th to ensure that we're able to share our research and to convince more and more people of the need to a basic income grant. So uh, I welcome you and thank you for bearing with me. Good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry, good afternoon. Um, and thank you, Isabel, so much for that kind introduction. Um, first and foremost, I just wanted to give a huge um, message of appreciation to Christopher Vermeulen and Luke Kralen. Um, These are two incredibly talented young men that have worked countless hours for free to make this website a possibility. Um, without their creativity and resilience in solving issue upon issue, this website has taken such a beautiful and, and purposeful um, direction. So thank you so much to them. Um, I have left their details in the PowerPoint and I will also place them in the chat um, if anyone would like to contact them after this. Can someone just uh, confirm that you're able to see my screen? We can. It does seem, Tina, that the um, that the website link is temporarily down. Okay, don't worry about that. It's going to be activated at 1.30. Um, so first of all, the main objectives um, 
And basically the idea behind creating this basic income grant website was to act as an advocacy platform where civil society organizations could come together and share their knowledge and share the call for a basic income grant. Um, we saw this year a resurgence in the call for a basic income grant, um, largely fueled by the July lootings. And we wanted to create a platform where the voices of South Africans and the, the call and the need for this basic income grant would be indisputable. And, and that I believe is what we have done. Um, we also wanted to allow South Africans to speak for themselves. I think way too often um, we as academics tend to, to speak for people um, and advocate for people, but we don't empower them and we don't listen to them. Um, I think that is something incredible about this website, um, as you'll see towards the end, that it allows those people to speak for themselves and to voice their needs. Um, we also wanted it to be a shared space of research. There is so much high quality research that disputes the many myths surrounding a basic income grant, such as the fact that it promotes dependency, that it isn't affordable. Um, there really is no excuse to perpetrate um, perpetuate these, these myths because there's so much high quality research done in this country and so recently that clearly um, disputes it. So we wanted this website to showcase that research. Lastly, we wanted it to be accessible to all. Um, in the coming weeks, this website will be zero data rated, which means that any person with access to a smartphone, tablet, um, or anything can really access this, um, this website and get the details on how they can advocate for a basic income grant that would potentially change their lives. So what is the basic income grant message? A huge um, part of this website is using graphics to explain what we are advocating for. Um, I think so often we use words and words and, and literature and analysis and research to explain the basic income grant, but that is not what ordinary citizens need. They need quick, easy to understand and simple. And I believe that the infographics created by Christopher Vermeulen along with Spy really illustrate our call and what we are asking for. Um, inclusive advocacy, a key pillar of, of this website. Um, during the resurgence of um, the call for a basic income grant, we saw that a lot of academics were, were debating it and talking about it and, and just really sharing such key information. But this information was not then relayed to ordinary citizens or to politicians, as we have seen um, in the finance minister's um, hesitancy. I would say to implement the basic income grant. And so we wanted this website to be a meeting point for politicians, ordinary citizens, academics, and civil society organizations to get the information they need um, in the way that best suits them. So either through the form of infographics, research, media articles, or testimonials, um, basically to understand the call for a basic income grant. Um, on our website, which will be linked in the chat shortly, um, you will see a diverse set of research that addresses concerns of feasibility, implementation, and social viability. As I said earlier, there are so many myths that people insist on perpetuating, but if they did the research and if they knew the facts, they would see that those myths hold no truth, particularly in South Africa. There have been BIG pilots held all over the world um, as is evident in a recent research paper by SPY um, that indicate that grants don't promote dependency. And in fact, it's the opposite. They promote employment. Um, they promote economic stimulation and the multiplier effect. Um, so we urge you to go onto our site to look at the research and make your, make your decision for yourself. Um, next, and one of my favorite um, points on this website is the fact that it allows people to share their testimonials. People are allowed to share them via WhatsApp, via the website, um, via email, in any form that, that suits them. And these testimonials are heartfelt messages about how this basic income grant would change their lives. It's very easy to advocate something when you are sitting in a position of privilege, um, as I am, as many of us are. Um, but we wanted to give voice to those who are so often not heard. And that is what the basic income grant website is centered around. So you will see recent testimonies on the website that you can go through. 
um, just relatively um, before I hand over to Dr. Nobi Lezulu to take a question and answer session. Um, I was reading a book the other day and it was by Archbishop Desmond Tutu's granddaughter. And she was talking about the fact that Ubuntu is an inherently African concept um, and the fabric of our society, but that it's not implemented in social policy. Um, and so this quote that says, Ubuntu teaches us to look outside of ourselves to find answers. It's about seeing the bigger picture, the other side of the story. Ubuntu is about reaching to our fellow men and women through whom we might just find comfort, contentment, and the sense of belonging we crave. Essentially, the basic income grant call is centered around the fact that we cannot live with dignity when our people, every single one of them, are not living with dignity. And until that day, we will call for the basic income grant because that is the easiest way to ensure the dignity of all of our people. Um, I'm going to hand over to Dr. Nobile Zulu, um, and he is going to take questions and answers about the site. Dr. Zulu, are you there? Yes, I am, Tina. Uh, looks okay. like there are no, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Isabel. Looks like there are no questions on the chat. Unless I'm missing something. Lindy K? Oh, I'm not sure whether people are aware that they're able to ask questions. Yep. So maybe let's give them a minute or two in case there are any questions that people want to ask. So these are questions about the site, um, about work on the basic income grants, or if you'd just like to share it in the chat. Um, what you think of the site? We'd appreciate that as well. Yeah, definitely. Any any questions or concerns about the site, or just things that you would like to see in the future, would be greatly appreciated. Um, we don't want this to be a spy website. That was never the intention, and and that's not what we want. We want it to be accessible to everyone and we want everyone to have a voice. So any suggestions or comments would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I see Russell has said it's, the site is, appears to be easy to use. Thank you for that, Russell. It uh, encourages us because what we wanted was a site that's easily accessible, not just for, for us, Mickey class, but also for, for, for the community at large. So we are going to make sure that also this site is accessible via mobile. And I think um, Tina or Isopel have mentioned that it's going to be a free site to access. So we're making sure that it's a site that's available to everyone and anyone, not just from South Africa, but internationally. Thank you, Russell, for that confirmation. There's another, I see another question that says, will you consider other languages? In time, we, we, we will, but for now, it's, it's, it's always a, a, a process. We're, we're currently doing, interestingly, we're doing some video animation now, and we've thought about doing some other languages. It's quite a, a process getting to interpret that and all of that. So for now, once this works picks up, then we can either try to go for Zulu and uh, Sutu, some of the most common languages in South Africa, and then cascade down to the other languages but that's something for the future and i would be appreciative if somebody comes up with the the money to help us to do that thank you um and then also just to add um people are able to um contribute testimonies in any language um any of the official south african languages and we will add those to the page um we want it to to be inclusive and, and diverse. And we think that allowing different languages on the platform is, is very important um, in order to ensure that. So thank you for the question, Russell. Um, it's definitely noted and it is in the works.
Great, if there are no further questions, um, then I'm going to, to draw this meeting to an end, short and sweet. Um, I think this is one of the first times that we've managed to, to stay on time with the webinar. So I think we're definitely improving. Um, just wanted to say again that I know it's very easy to become despondent and to look around at our country and just feel hopeless and lost and like you are just another clog in the system and there's no difference that you can make. But the basic income grant would make a difference to every single South African. It is our greatest opportunity to eliminate poverty and inequality. Um, and we just really hope um, that you will share our interest in this and our, our advocacy for this. We hope that you will tweet about it, talk to your friends about it. And when they, they make their little comments about the fact that it's not affordable or um, it promotes dependency, we hope that you will have the research and the proof at your fingertips um, through this website to rebuke those statements and show just how important it is um, for the future of our country. Um, Isabel mentioned earlier how different our country would look now if we had implemented a basic income grant in 1994. And I hope that we will not make the same mistake and be saying the same thing in another 20 years. Um, and the only way we can do that is to all speak about it and badger government until they give it to us. So thank you so much for joining. We appreciate every single one of you. And we hope that you will share the live stream. Um, the recording is on Facebook and our LinkedIn and um, Twitter. And we just hope that you will share it, that you will talk about it, that you will tweet about it. So thank you very much. And I hope you all have a lovely day further. Thank you very much, Tina. Thanks to the team and thanks to all. Thank you, everybody. We were attending. Thank you, Tim. Cheers. You're welcome.